on nitrogen, the nitrogen cycle and the microbes involved in the nitrogen cycle. So we've already, um, and, and, and I'm going to simplify this, folks. I'm just going to use this diagram. Um, in lecture, we'll pass out a simplified nitrogen cycle um, that will basically have pretty much everything I'm going to talk about. So folks, for us, when we look at microbes involved in the nitrogen cycle, we're going to look at three steps, three stages. So the first step we've already talked about um, a little bit um, in lab, the process called nitrogen fixation. And this is when microbes take molecular nitrogen, which is not a usable form of nitrogen, meaning um, organisms can't use molecular nitrogen to make nitrogen-containing organic molecules like amino acids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So there's a few microbes that have the enzyme complex called nitrogenase that can take the, the um, unusable nitrogen and fix it into a usable form of nitrogen. So this process is called um, nitrogen fixation. So we're going to take molecular nitrogen and then reduce it into ammonia. And usually it'll pick up a, a hydrogen ion and, and thus be converted into ammonium, especially, especially in soil or water. And the two groups of microbes we discussed that can carry out this process are the soil microbes we looked at in lab, um, rhizobium, which will invade the roots of legumes, peas, beans, clovers, alfalfa lupins, um, triggering the plant to form an anaerobic root nodule. And it's in those anaerobic root nodules that the rhizobium uses its nitrogenase to um, fix molecular nitrogen into the usable ammonia or ammonium. And then the plants can use the ammonia, ammonium, to make their nitrogen-containing organic molecules. So it's a win-win um, symbiosis mutualism. The plants, through photosynthesis, are synthesizing um, sugars that will they will then transport to the roots and then feed that, quote-unquote, to the rhizobium. Um, the rhizobium needs, needs lots of organic molecules because nitrogen fixation takes lots of ATP. The other um, bacteria we discussed that can also carry out nitrogen fixation are the cyanobacteria like nostoc. And you'll recall that the cyanobacteria have a different strategy for protecting nitrogenase from molecular oxygen. The cyanobacteria form a special cell, a different cell called a heterocyte, which is an anaerobic um, um, environment. There's no oxygenic photosynthesis that occurs in the heterocyte, and thus it's in the heterocyte that the cyanobacteria carry out nitrogen fixation. Now, um, if we say that was stage one of, of the nitrogen cycle, then stage two, if we're looking at soil, maybe we're looking at um, fields, um, there are other soil living bacteria that will take the ammonia and convert it to nitrites and then to nitrates. And this process is called nitrification. So just like nitrogen fixation, if we're farmers, we want nitrification to occur because nitrates are a wonderful source of nitrogen for plants, right? So if we have nitrogen fixation and nitrification going on, our crops are going to grow really, really well. All right, now the process that we wouldn't want as farmers is the third stage called denitrification. And this occurs when the soil becomes anaerobic and it forces some of the bacteria to switch over <laughs> to anaerobic respiration. Using nitrates is an alternate terminal electron acceptor. So in denitrification, the bacteria can take the usable um, form of nitrogen nitrates and convert it all the way back to that unusable form of nitrogen, molecular nitrogen. So this uh, denitrification then is a loss of usable nitrogen. And so for farmers, we don't want this to happen. Um, one thing we could do as farmers is try not to overwater our fields um, when water saturates soil. Oxygen does not diffuse well through water, and so if you overwater, over irrigate your soil, you can create an anaerobic environment, and that would trigger the soil bacteria to switch to anaerobic respiration, denitrification. Um, something a farmer wouldn't have control over is if there's heavy rainstorms, right? And again, that would trigger um, anaerobic respiration. Um, so some things we can't control, we can't control the weather. So we would say for farmers, we want, we feel beneficial um, nitrogen fixation and nitrification. And then as farmers, we don't want denitrification to occur. 
but <laughs> there's a couple of other perspectives and we want to really zoom in on this process of denitrification um, because there's some situations where as humans we want denitrification to occur and one example would be if we're working in the sewage treatment plants we, before we release the treated sewage into the Sacramento River, which is where it goes, we want to try to get rid of all these usable forms of nitrogen. We want to get rid of the nitrates in the water. And the reason is, if we dump treated sewage into the Sacramento River, which eventually flows into the Sacramento Bay and into the, into the Pacific Ocean, um, aquatic cyanobacteria and algae can use these nitrates to start growing like crazy. They prolific proliferate. They create what's called a bloom um, because of the pigments that some of the algae and cyanobacteria have. They might actually color the water um, so we could see like green appearing water or along the coast we might have red appearing water, the so-called red tides. Now this is not good. Um, the, this mass explosion in the population of cyanobacteria and or algae are, are, refer, are often referred to as harmful algal blooms for two reasons. One is some cyanobacteria and some algae produce toxins that could be toxic to aquatic organisms, aquatic um, mammals, to birds. Um, also, if we have, say, dogs or livestock that go wading in water, you know, a lake or a pond or a stream, that has one of these harmful algal blooms, um, the toxins can hurt our dogs, our livestock. And of course, they certainly can hurt humans, so that's a huge concern. Um, another concern is if we have all, all these um, cyanobacteria and algae, eventually they're going to die, and then um, organisms that use aerobic respiration are going to decompose the, the dead algal and cyanobacteria cells, and then they'll end up using up all the oxygen in the water. So we end up with these what are called dead zones. You know, the fish can't live there. Organisms that require molecular oxygen can't live in those dead zones. So for this reason, um, we want to make sure that um, we aren't dumping water that has excess nitrates in it. So in this uh, sewer treatment plant, again, they're going to encourage microbes to carry out denitrification of the sewage before it's dumped into the river. Another concern is if you're a farmer and you're adding artificial nitrate fertilizers to your soil, if you over irrigate or if there's a big rainstorm, some of those excess nitrates could wash into the, the runoff water, the, we'll call it ag runoff water. And then again, if that enters our waterways, gets into the, the rivers, um, the coastal waters, that too will cause a harmful algal bloom. And in addition, if we have maybe like a big farm, maybe like a dairy farm or a feedlot or a big poultry farm, um, the, the feces from the animals can get washed into the waterways. And again, that's going to cause an increase in usable nitrogen and can cause an increase in um, the harmful algal blooms. So we would argue then that if we're working in sewage treatment or if we're trying to teach or, or if we're trying to treat water that's running off of our, our egg fields or our um, farms where a lot of animals are, we want denitrification to occur. And what's so awesome is um, some farmers are uh, using a process of microbial bioremediation. So bioremediation, microbial bioremediation, is when microbes can break down, get rid of, detoxify pollutants um, or other um, toxins. And a really simple way to do this, which I think is so cool, is as a farmer, you could dig a pit in, in one of your fields, and then you can fill it with wood chips and throw in some dirt, and the dirt will have the denitrifying bacteria on them. And then what you do is you let the um, runoff from your fields or from your farm run through that bioreactor. And what the microbes in the bioreactor will do is denitrify the water, so converting the usable nitrogen back to molecular nitrogen. And then once the water's been treated, then you release it into the streams, the San Francisco Bay, the coastal waters. So a microbial bioreactors uh, are a great way to help treat this water that might um, uh, contribute to the occurrence of harmful algal blooms. So folks, I think that will do it for this nitrogen cycle one. Okay, so let's see.
And then the next audio will be for the next lecture unit, which is on microbial growth. So hopefully we'll get that, that audio up maybe by next week.